So I'm going to explain how do you use DSP software and a laptop for RTA software to flatten the factory response. In test is going to be a 2014 Honda Accord Sport head unit. This head unit I have modified with RCA outputs, but that did not change the frequency response. I measured it before in speaker level outputs and after I bypassed the internal amplifier and is exactly the same. All I did was just change the distortion. So I have that fed into the JL Audio VX 1000-5i. That's inputs 3 and 4. That routes into the amplifier. Out of the amplifier, I come into my sound device's USB pre, which is monitored by this laptop here. And then I'm using a secondary laptop in order to tune the JL Audio. So this is the tune platform that's communicating with the VXI. Now the end result here is what you see. The green line is what I, I'm going to show you essentially how I quickly EQ'd the blue line, which is what we originally started with. So you can see that blue line's a little crazy. We extended low frequency response and flattened the response quite considerably. Now in order to set up the JLVXI to correct for factory head unit correct equalization, what we're going to do is we're going to route the input signal to the pre-outs and we bring that back in. So let me show you how that's done. So of course we're drawing in VXI. You can see as I hover over a point, lines appear. So right now I have the head unit. And we want right and left. So I have channel three and four, routes to the pre-outs. And then if I bring my pre-outs in, you see I've got this label and this actually says from pre-out left. Then I can bring those and that left channel I can route that to my front tweeter left, I can route it to my left woofer, and I can also route it to my sub. And then conversely, I bring right channel, and actually that one is not correct. Delete that, let's bring that down, that comes to the sub, and that's right, and that's left. So, right channel comes in and it goes to the tweeter output, the right woofer output, and it sums for the mono. Remember this is the VXI 1000 or VX 1000 slash 5i. So what I've effectively done is I've routed the inputs into the pre-out and then I bring that back around. Now after that's done, we can go ahead and we can take a look and we can tune it. Now we're going to tune it to create an equalization. Now I can't just do it with this, instead I'm also going to use that. So I'm going to take a pause real quick. I'm going to set this up so you can see both screens simultaneously. So now that I have this set up, what you can see in the background on the FAR PC is an RTA of the amplifier's pre-output. I have another video that talks about how do you use an RTA to actually see the electrical signal out of an amplifier. You'll notice you don't hear anything, but it is actually pink noise from AutoSound 2000 Disc 102. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is I'm going to adjust the equalization to compensate for the factory EQ curve. Now you can see that factory curve out of my Honda is pretty terrible. It has a 80 hertz high pass filter and it has a lot of shaping to it. Our goal is to correct for that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I got to this point, right? You can see that equalization in the background. Um, I actually have a screenshot of that, so I'm not going to waste your time of you know, how I just experiment. I'll kind of explain it as I go. Uh, now if I go back to my original preset, you'll see the equalization in the back change to match what the factory output is of this uh, 2014. Uh, Honda Accord head unit, and this is really applicable for 2013 and 2016 or 17 Honda Accords, LX Sport, and EX. And then it also, uh, the premium units has some equalization too. So what do I do to fix this? Well, the first thing I like to do is I like to grab a shelving EQ. That's going to be your 10th EQ, and I set it to shelving in the tune. And when you set it to shelving, it gives you the ability to actually attenuate everything above a certain point. And I found right around 80 hertz and about minus nine and a half db tends to be pretty good for what I, what my goals are here and the key with that filter is still 7.1 now this is going to respond fairly slowly because it is on a 25 
average and let's change those averages for you. You can go to five averages, right? You know what you can see kind of in real time what I'm doing. All right, next thing you know, I, you can see I got some humps there. So let's start up on the high end. Let's go ahead and grab EQ9. Let's take it to 13,000 and let's give ourselves a plus. About 13.2 and a plus 1.8. Trying to flatten the high end out. Obviously, you can do your own house EQ curve there. Next, let's go to about 28. Uh, 8, so about 2800, and let's go ahead and do a minus 1.4. Uh, 2800 and a minus 1.4. And the whole point of you seeing this in real time is so that way you can kind of see what my end result here is. And I want a little bit wider Q, so we're going to go to Q of 1. Next, we're going to grab Q7, we're going to take that to about 1600, and we're going to give ourselves a 1.4 boost. So, you can see it flatten that spot out right there. Alright, now we're going to go to 638, 640 or so, and we're going to go minus 0.8. So, we're just giving ourselves just a little bit of cut there. Apologize for this noise upstairs. Apparently, my floors are creaky. And I can't, well, I'm going to wait to do this till everyone's asleep. So let's go to 250 hertz. It's going to be EQ5. We're going to put a Q of 2 on this. And we're going to take it to 3.9. Uh, it's positive 3.9. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit of boost there. And again, we're trying to account for, we're basically lessening the attenuation. You know, always heard that, you know, boost is bad. Well, I'm just attenuating less, remember, because I'm using a shelving EQ. All right, once it comes back, it's on a repeating track. Uh, I'm going to do EQ4, which is going to be 176 hertz, about, and about 0.5. So, not much, 175 or so. So, just bring it up a little bit. I'm going to go to EQ3, which is going to be a Q of 2. Let's see here in 4, I want a Q of about 1.4. EQ3, I want a Q of 2, and let's take that to about 119, 120 hertz or so. Give ourselves a little bit of boost. Let's go to EQ2. We're going to go a Q of 3. Uh, we're going to do a 70 hertz cut 4 dB down. You can see what I'm trying to do there is take that mid bass bump out. Try to flatten that out. And lastly, I'm going to take EQ1. I'm going to give it a 40 hertz boost. Try and get myself a little bit of low end back. I'm going to go with 35 hertz or so. So, if we compare that to where we were, and you can play with this more if you want to flatten this out around here, we can increase our averages to 25, say. So that way we get a little bit smoother response. Remember, the longer you average, uh, the more undulations you take into consideration. This is undulating noise and you take a look at it and say yeah you know what 250 hertz or so is still a little high I got a 250 hertz filter at 3.8 that's my number five we can bring that down a little bit maybe maybe we can smooth that out but that's essentially the process you know there's still perfection left to do here because you can see just below 100 hertz I'm still pretty high and I can bring that down if I want I can just pull that down a little bit more and you can play with this as long as you want to get to essentially whatever level that you want, but that's the process.